Welcome to MAKE, Hands-On Intro to Engineering Design, a course taught at the University of South Florida. This tutorial discusses more advanced part modeling features. Hi, this is the third video of the Autodesk Inventor 2014 professional tutorial series for the MAKE course. Today I'm going to be discussing a few more advanced sketching and modeling concepts. I'm going to be doing that again with these model parts from the rotary airplane engine uh, sample project you can find on the website. Here's the uh, assembly in Autodesk Inventor as I have it now. And the parts that I'm going to be making are this part here, the uh, pear-shaped connector to the crankshaft, as well as uh, this part of the engine housing that contains the cylinders. So we can just get started right away here. We're going to do the uh, pear-shaped part first. So we're going to do Control N, create a new standard millimeter part, hit Create, and it's going to open up our blank part for us. I'm going to draw here on the XY plane, just like we did in the previous video. We're going to start out by drawing the circle that will be for the hole that connects this part to the crankshaft. So we want this to be 5 millimeters. Get the dimension there, hit OK. This is for the other hole, it's 1.6 millimeters. Hit Enter. OK. The distance between these two center points is 5 millimeters. So we're going to dimension that. And uh, so we've got the holes going. Now to get the uh, exterior of that shape, we're going to have to add a few more circles uh, to represent those arcs. So the first one's going to be 5 millimeters. Enter that dimension in there. And then the next one for the bottom is going to be 10 millimeters. So the part's starting to take shape here. We need to connect these two to create a smooth shape, connect them with lines. And although the shape isn't right now, I'm going to show you something that will get that to work. So that's where I'm going to introduce um, constraints. Constraints are these settings that you can apply to two uh, elementary entities that will allow them, that will position them in uh, certain locations. So you can have a, a coincident constraint. That's where two uh, elementary entities are on the same point. Collinear, they're on the same line. Parallel and perpendicular, uh, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, tangent, equal. There's a whole bunch of them for you to um, for you to choose from. But here I'm going to just demonstrate the tangent. So we want this to be a smooth curve over the whole surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this line and the circle with the tangent constraint. And uh, as, you know, as you can see, we now get a nice tangent line here. We'll do it again for this line and the circle. They're tangent. And now we can go down here to the larger circle, apply it. And as you can see, we now have a nice smooth shape. <clears throat> As you can see though, we still have a bunch of these construction lines um, that are remaining from the original circles that we drew for the exterior of the shape. So what you can do to remove those is uh, another tool here located in the modify section of the ribbon called trim. So if we select this, we can actually go down here and remove individual line segments from the drawing. As you can see, there's this kind of uh, gray dotted pattern that shows up and once um, that, uh, when, once you click on that, it will be removed from the drawing, and so you can kind of clean up the, all these construction lines, and we're left with the smooth shape that we want. We'll hit Finish Sketch here, and uh, as you can see, it's exactly what we need. So we're going to go over here and extrude it. We're going to select this profile. Um, we're going to say three millimeters, and again do it from the center line. We can check out how it is from the edge. Profile looks good, so we'll say OK. Finally, we'll go over here and select our ABS plastic, and uh, now we're done with that shape. So as you can see, it's kind of a complex shape, but uh, using these tools uh, provided by Inventor can create some uh, pretty nice um, drawings here. So we'll go to the next part which is the engine housing that contains the cylinders. So again, we'll pull up the 
new file dialog select the standard millimeter part as usual and hit create and so now we can start if you remember this uh, this part is a large square uh, shape with uh, some features cut into it so we're going to start out by drawing that square use the center point rectangle and we're going to draw it 100 millimeters and that's dimensioning one side we'll grab the dimension tool dimension the other one and now we have our 100 by 100 millimeter square and um, if we go back and look you can see that there's a circular portion as well as these arms that come out as well as several holes for screws so uh, in this first sketch we're gonna go and draw that the circular portion in the center and that's a hole with a diameter of 35 millimeters so we'll draw that finish the sketch and um, we're gonna extrude that to uh, get our first basic 3d part of this uh, model so we're gonna do this in the same way we did all the other ones we select the profile select the distance have it symmetric and if you look now it's now a flat plate rather than a 2D sketch so we can keep working on it so now what we can do we can actually use the plane that was created with the extrusion to draw our next sketch on so what we can do is we can go over here right click I'm sorry we can click uh, left click on the um, newly created surface and go again here to the create sketch this will now create a sketch on that surface so not on any of the predefined uh, planes that uh, inventor provides it's now created on a, uh, an entirely new plane that we made from a from an extru extrusion so you can see that this plane that we're drawing on is bounded by these yellow lines here so now let's draw the holes for the screws on the corner so I'm going to show you a trick here where we will only have to draw one hole and we can repeat this hole over around the uh, corners so we'll draw the hole here make it three millimeters in diameter and we'll dimension it relative to the edges of the square three millimeters here three millimeters here so now we have our sketch ready to make our hole <clears throat> we make a hole in the exact same manner as we would extrude material we just use the cut option rather than the extrude option so first we're gonna go here and select our profile then uh, we go over and select the cut option and this actually will allow us to cut the material rather than add more material to it zoom in and get you a nice view so this is a the cut tool and again we have different um, extent uh, options with the cut you can either do a fixed distance we can go to the next surface we can go to a specified surface we can go between these two surfaces or we can go all the way through so what I'm going to choose is to go to next and in that way if we ever in increase the thickness of the plate the hole will still go all the way through if I were to choose a fixed distance if we were to increase the thickness of the plate we would then get a blind hole so if I hit OK we can now see that there's a hole there look at it from the front so you can see right through it no material there so now to get it into the other corners we will use the uh, circular pattern tool so we can click on the circular pattern and this allows us to pattern features uh, around a specific axis uh, we can do this over a certain uh, number of degrees as well as uh, place a specified number of components so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and select the feature that we want to uh, create the pattern with which is our hole and then we have to select the axis around which we want it to rotate so we're going to select the z-axis so at first it gives us kind of a some funky options but that's because we it has it preset to give us six uh, objects six uh, repetitions of the feature so if we just select four now we can see that they're in the right location we want it four objects total around 360 degrees that's exactly what we want so when we click OK you can now see 
there are four holes in the corner. Perfect. So now for the final part, we want to create the little slots for the pistons to slide through. So again, we're going to start a new sketch here on the surface of this plate. And we're going to start out by just drawing some arbitrary lines here. We're going to draw one here. This line is 25 millimeters long, but its position is fairly arbitrary. Uh, the starting point is fairly arbitrary along that circle. So we hit 25, OK. We'll go over here. And if we start the point here where it's parallel, it will automatically create this constraint for us to make them equal. We can go up here. And again, we'll specify 25 millimeters. And so now we have two lines. We can now connect these two lines uh, to create the slot. And we'll dimension that line. We need these to be 10 millimeters. And so because we had that predefined constraint, those uh, two 25 millimeter lines that we originally drew expand equally from the center line. So now we just have to complete this uh, shape by drawing an arc here. So our shape is now complete, and we say finish sketch. And uh, we're going to do another extruded cut, just like we did with the holes for the screws. We're going to say two next and hit OK. And so now we have a single slot here um, for the um, pistons to slide through. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to create another circular pattern with this feature this time. So now, if we select the feature from the feature tree on the left-hand side, it will automatically select that feature when we go to choose the circular pattern. So it's just a quick little tip there. We can select our rotation axis. Again, Z-axis. We w This time, we still want it 360 degrees, but we actually want 7. So that's the preview of what it looks like. That looks right. We hit OK, and now we have our uh, engine housing shape plate cut and uh, ready to go. This concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching.